In this video I'm going to be taking a look at how we can take a sketch like this, darken it up using a marker pen, import it into Inkscape, convert it into a vector graphic, add some colour, add a background to make something like this. Stick with us. So to start with I just sketched out an image of the Grim Reaper. I then went over it with ink. I then thickened up the lines to make it look a little bit more cartoon like added some extra elements, took a photo, and that's what I'm going to be using today. So I've opened up a new document in Inkscape. First thing I'm going to need to do is import the photo of the image that we're going to use. I've just taken a photo with my phone. Um, you probably get better results if you use a scanner. But I'm just going to come down and I'm going to import and import the image. We can OK to all the settings. And we get the photo of, of our sketch in Inkscape. So to convert this into a vector graphic, first thing we need to do is come up to Path, down to Trace Bitmap, and that'll open up our Trace Bitmap dialog box over on the right hand side. So I'm going to hover over these three dots, and I'm going to drag it right across the page. And when it gets big enough, it will shift the preview window over to the right hand side, so we can see our image a lot clearer. So in here, we want single scan. We're using brightness cutoff. Um, threshold, speckles, we've got everything set to the defaults. The result looks relatively good. If you did want to learn more about Trace Bitmap, if you click on the link in the top right hand corner, there's a video in there that you can watch and I've, I've covered most of the settings that you can go through. So with these settings, I think I'm going to stick to the defaults for now. It seems to be doing quite a good job of picking out our artwork. We have got some of the lines still remaining. Um, moral of the story is don't use a line pad, but I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to press apply. Image has disappeared, so we can come over, hover over these three dots, double click them, and that will take it off to the right hand side. We can then get hold of our vector graphic, drag it off. We're going to zoom in just to see what it's like. It's not too bad for what we, what we want, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, we zoom back out and get rid of the original image. So we can select it and press delete. And I'm going to shrink down our new path so it fits onto our page. So we've got a nice white background to work with. So I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions. Then we're going to shrink it down to the size of the page, somewhere around there. Drag it down. Let's shrink it a little bit more. So hold control, drag on the handle in the corner. And there we have it. So if we press five, that'll rescale our page. Uh, to fit our window. Now first thing we need to do is remove some of the bits of the image that we don't want around the outside. So we've got all these dark lines and part of the ring bind around here. So we can just quickly trim that off. But if we come up, grab our rectangle tool, we're going to come over and we're just going to draw a rectangle over the elements that we want. I've currently got my rectangle tool. It's got no fill colour and a red stroke. So we can see what we're doing. So once we're happy that we've got our our rectangle um, covering the elements that we want. Hold on, let's get our selection tool. We can hold down shift. We've got the rectangle selected. So if we click on the image behind <clears throat> or our path behind, so we've got both of them selected. There we go, both selected. We can come up to path and down to intersection. So it'll only keep the sections of our image that are within the rectangle. So with that done, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is split this up. So I'm gonna use a sneaky little trick if we come over and get our eraser tool from the right hand side down here, in here we just want to check that in mode we've got the center option selected, which is cut out from path and shapes. I've currently got a width of five and I've got caps center set to one. This just rounds the corners. We also need to make sure this button on the end here, break apart cut items, is also selected. So with this button selected, what it would do is when we erase something, it will split up the different sections of the image. So we can just erase something there. And once I had a little think about it, it will split our image up into different elements. So now if we grab our selection tool, now these are all separate elements. We click off to deselect. If I drag a box over the Grim Reaper, I can come up to Path, down to Union, join them together. I can do the same again with a bat and same again with a garland. So now we've created these individual elements of our image. We're going to clean them up in a minute, but what I'm first I'm going to do is just remove 
all of the main sections of our image that we want and then we can just drag a box over our page any of the remaining bits and bobs that we don't want we can just press delete and get rid of them so now we can go through the sections of our image and just clean them up so if we put them down there we can put our garland at the top we can put our bat down here I'm going to zoom in we can start with the bat so looking at our bat we've got a few different elements that need to be cleaned up so I think what I'll do to start with is use the eraser tool and just clean away some of these bits so if we come down we select our eraser tool we don't want to break all these elements apart again so we just need to come over and uncheck the break apart box I've got width set to 5 I've got my mode set to um, cut away from paths and shapes and now that's a little bit thin isn't it so we can let's increase it up to 10 so all I'm going to do now now I've adjusted my settings, we can just come in and we can literally draw over the bits that we want to erase. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes doing this and I'll get back to you. We can press Ctrl Z if we make a mistake to undo it. So I've just gone through cleaning up our images with the eraser tool. Now there are bits that we could do with a bit more ink. So for this I'm going to use the uh, freehand drawing tool. Click on that one. I'm going to have smoothing. I've set smoothing to 30. What this does is if we remove this a moment, let's put that back down to zero. If we use smoothing, when we draw a line freehand, it comes out very jagged. I've currently got this set, so we've got a shape on here, ellipse. That's why it's uh, thicker in the middle than it is at the ends. So now if we increase our smoothing, I'm going to put it back up to 30, and then we can draw a line again and this time you can see that it's smoothed out all the lumps and bumps so I'm going to stick with 30 I'm going to use um, shape I've set to ellipse scale I've currently got set to 0.12 what scale is is if we come down and grab our nodes tool we zoom in there's a little white handle at the end if we pull on this we can thicken our stroke and thin it out so when we scale, this is what we're doing. We're adjusting how wide our line is going to be. So we want it about there. So the scale adjusts the width of our stroke. So let's come back into our freehand tool. So we can delete those. So we get rid of that one. Got our selection tool, select the other stroke, get rid of that one. And then if there's any bits that you just want to um, correct, um, like here down the side of our eye, it'd be quite nice to fill those in so we haven't got funny little shapes. Get my freehand tool, I'm going to come over and I'm just going to draw down here over the top and we can fill in these shapes. So now we've added all these extra um, little strokes or actually path effects at the moment because we're using ellipse. So what we need to do is union all these together. So if we drag a box over the top of our garland, we can then come up to path, union. What that'll do, it'll just join all the bits together to create a single path. So now we've got our surprise garlands looking fairly good. Our grim reapers, not too bad. And our bats, not too bad. So now we've got the elements of our uh, illustration cleaned up. I want to start putting it together. So I want two of these bats so I can have a bat at either end holding up the garland. So with it selected, I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. And then we can drag our bats off. We'll select both of them actually. So I hold down Shift, select the other one, and we can just reduce the size of these a little bit so they fit a bit better. We grab the surprise garland. I'm going to hold down Control, constrain the proportions, move it down a little bit. I'm going to rotate it slightly, so if we click it again, we can just rotate it. I think that looks quite good. We can drag that down over the top of our Grim Reaper. I'm going to grab one of my bats and I'm going to move it up. One thing we can see when we, we move back is because we're scaling these different elements, they don't seem, the lines don't seem uniform. So our Grim Reaper has quite dark lines, dark thick lines, whereas our Surprise Garland 
is a little bit on the thin side up here. So we're going to, we're going to use the tweak tool. If you want to learn more about the tweak tool, click on the link in the top right hand corner and in there there's a video that runs through all the different features that you can uh, adjust with the tweak tool and it is quite extensive. So for this I want this to thicken our lines. So I'm going to come here, we've got shrink or grow um, our lines or our paths. So we're going to click on this. Right. We just try it and see what it does. Oh, my help if I did it the right way. So we press Control Z. So we need to hold down Shift and then drag over the top, and it should. That's a bit too heavy for my liking, so I'm going to press Control Z. So we try five. And we just drag along that, and that thickens it up a little bit. And I think that matches a little bit better now. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So the next thing we need to do is add some extra string uh, under our bat's feet. So again, I'm just going to use the freehand tool for this. So now we're to this stage of our illustration. We've completed our line drawing. We're quite happy with it. We need to start uh, filling in the colors. So to fill in the colors, we're going to use the paint bucket tool. There's quite a few different settings you can use in the paint bucket tool. Um, if you want to watch a video on how to use it, click on the link in the top right hand corner and I've created a video up there that runs through all the different settings and exactly how it works. As a quick run through, if we come up, click on the paint bucket tool over on the left hand side, uh, we've got a few settings at the top. Fill by, we leave at visible colour. We've got a threshold which kind of dictates um, how much variation in the colour you can have. We leave that set to 5. Um, we've got Grow Shrink By. This allows us to create an offset, which we'll also be using. We've got the units that we're using, and we've got Close Gaps. So this allows us to determine what size gaps it's going to class as a boundary. But we're filling his um, gown to start with. So we click on this, not much happens. If we look down at the bottom, click again, area is not bounded, cannot fill. This is, means there must be a gap in here somewhere. So at the bottom of his sleeve, there's a gap. So let's see if we can fix that first, actually. So we're going to come back to our paint, our pen tool, and we're just going to fill in any of these gaps. Hopefully that's all of them. So we zoom back out, grab our selection tool, we select our skeleton, we we'll hold shift, we we'll drag a box over the bits that we've just created. So we should have them all selected now. If we come up to path, down to Union, we can join them all together. So let's try that again. We're going to click on his gown, see if we can fill it in. Yep, it's filled it now. So as you can see, we've got some gaps around the outside of our filled area. This is due to the way that the fill tool works. It looks for boundaries, so changes in color, changes in opacity, and tries to fill to the nearest border. So we could increase our threshold, which allows a bit of variation. So we stick that up to 20. I press Control Z to back step, have another go. Might have improved it a little bit, but what I'm going to do is add an offset so it fills in these areas. So if we come up to the top here, we we'll stick an offset of one, see how that works. So we we'll press Control Z to get rid of our fill, have another go. And that's, that's almost there. We've still got some gaps here and there. So we're going to Let's increase that to two. So control Z to back step, we'll have another go. And that's pretty much filling it all now. We've got a little bit down the bottom there. We might actually get rid of that if we zoom in a touch. We might actually, if we press control Z, now we've zoomed in a bit because it works on screen resolution, it might fill that gap now. So there we go, it seems to have filled it all. I don't Think I might have gone over the black line a little bit, so if we just reduce that down to one point, let's go 1.7. Press enter, press control Z to back step, fill again, and we seem to have hopefully got some of the black outline still around the edge. So that's that's pretty much filled all of it. I'm quite happy with that. But you'll notice because we're filling on top of our black line, it's covering up our black line. Now we don't want it to do this, we want the black line to be sat on top. So we're going to use a little trick. Press Control Z to come back out. At the moment, the whole of our illustration is on one layer. If we look down the bottom here, we've got layer one. 
what we can do is we can lock this layer so we can't affect it. So we can come over and we can click on the lock icon. So now we can't fill into this layer. What we need to do is create another layer that we can use. So if we come up to the top here and click on our um, view objects, this is this will open up our layers and objects dialog box. Now in here we can see layer one. If we double click on this, we can change the name of that to line drawing. Then we can click on the add a layer button. We could call this one color. We're going to add this one below. So what's going to happen is we're going to be coloring in behind our line drawing. So that overlap is going to be behind the black line. So it's not going to affect our line drawing. So we're going to press add. Now we've got color layer selected. So this time if we come grab our paint bucket tool, hopefully now when we click on it, it should fill behind our black line. So our black line remains and we have filled all of the area behind it. So now we can go round and we can color the different elements of our image. So now we've filled in all the different elements of our image with block color. The paths that we've created to fill in the color, we can actually use them for, for different tasks. So for the gown, for example, I want to add a bit of shading to my gown. So if I right click on my gown, I can come up and I can look for set clip group. So we click on this and that will convert it into a clip group. So what this means is now we can add shading and color and we don't have to worry about overlapping it around the outside of our gown. It will keep it all contained within the clip group. So what I'm gonna do is come up, just gonna grab my Bezier tool and I'm just gonna draw out some rather crude, some rather crude uh, areas of shading. And so now I've created this path. We need to put this path inside our clip group because we've missed. So if we grab our path over on the right hand side here in our layers and objects dialog box, we can drag it down and we can drop it on top of the group and it will put it inside our clip group. And you can see that now it's cut it off, clipped it within that area. So if we select this path, we come in, oh, we need our, our fill and stroke dialog box open. So in here, now we've got our um, path selected, we can blur it. So using clip groups, we can add a bit of depth and shading to the different elements of our image. I want to do similar things with some of the other bits. So we can also use radial gradients. If we zoom in on the eyes, I'm going to come up and I'm going to select radial gradient. And then we can change the stops. So at the moment, we've got the center is black. I'm going to change that to white and the outside stop we've got as black but transparent. So if we change this to black and fully opaque. Now we can come down to the gradients tool on the left hand side and we can just adjust our handles until we're happy with the result. So I'm going to speed up the video just while I adjust this gradient until I'm happy with it. So now I've created a gradient that I quite like for the left eye. I want the same gradient for the right eye. So we want to be able to copy this gradient. So one way we can do this is if we right click, we can come down to copy, select our right eye, then we can go up to edit, come down to paste style. What that will do is paste the gradient into this eye. If we grab the gradients tool, the reason nothing seems to have changed is because it puts the gradient in the same location as the original. So all we need to do is drag this across now to this side and we've got the same gradient in both eyes. So I'm also gonna add a gradient to the inside of the hood, I think. So if we zoom in to work on this bat, there are other ways that we can enter clip groups. So if we select our bat fill color, we can convert this to a clip group. So we can right click, come down, uh, set clip group. So now we've turned it into a clip group. We can come on again, right click, and then we can come down to enter group. So if we click on this one, this enters us into the group. So anything we do now will be within inside the group. So we can come in, let's move them down a little bit. We can add our shading. So I'm gonna grab the Bezier tool and I'm just quickly gonna go around and just add our shaded sections. So it's filling at white at the moment. So we can just change that to a darker brown. And if we come into our fill and stroke dialog box, we can blur that. So we've just got this added depth to our image. 
I'm also going to add some um, pink interiors to the ears, so I'll just use the ellipse tool for that one. So we can drag out one, I'll get my selection tool, move that up a touch, change it to pink, and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. So we've got one there as well. If we hold down Shift, we can select both of them. I'm going to come down to Blur, blur them both out a little bit, and I'm quite happy with that. So we've come back to our Layers and Objects dialog box. Now we've got this group, which is our uh, bats fill color. So if we double click on there, we can put left bat. We can exit our clip group by right clicking and then come up to e exit group and that will take us out of the clip group. So what I want to do is because our left bat is exactly the same as our right bat, we can take the color from the left bat, duplicate it and move it over to our right bat. But we do need to remember the color in the eyes as well. So if we just shrink down our uh, clip group, we've got the eyes above. So if I just hold down shift, select the eyes as well, we can come up to the top, we can press group, we can double click on that, we can name it left bat, press enter. Then I'm going to duplicate our left bat. We can call this one right bat, press enter. Now I'm just going to shrink down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to grab the right bat coloring and I'm just going to move it over. Then we can just go to part fine adjustment, we can move it into place over the top of our other, or under our other bat. This may take a little bit of work to get it in the right place. I'm happy with that. So if we press five on the clipboard, we can zoom out. One thing I will do, I think, is add a little bit of reflection to our blade uh, of the side down here. So I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool, I'm going to drag out the finished rectangle, I'll change it to white, get my selection tool, click on it a second time to get the rotation handles, I'm going to rotate it. Now we want this to be within our clip group. So we take the rectangle and we're just going to drop it onto the blade clip group. There it is down the bottom there. So we just drop it in there so it's within our clip group so we don't get any overlap onto the background. So now we've got it selected, we can come back into our fill and stroke dialog box and we can blur it, reduce the opacity slightly, and then it appears to be a reflection on the blade of the side. So now I'm happy with my overall illustration, we need to add a background. So I'm going to come over to the right hand side to our layers and objects dialog box. I'm just going to click on the first button at the top to switch it to layers only, which tidies it up a little bit. I'm then going to add a layer. I want it below the current layer and I'm going to call this one background. With background selected, we can come up to file, down to import, and I've just imported an image from Pixabay of a haunted house. So I'm going to click on this one. This one looks a little bit different when we import it because it's an Adobe Illustrator file. I'm going to click OK. So if we just move over so we can see what we're working with, we we'll zoom out a little bit. So we're going to take the bits we want and put them over into our image. I think, so what we've we got, if we drag them about, we can see what we've got. So this is a group containing all of these different elements. I want to remove the bats from this. So I'm going to come up to the top and we're going to click ungroup a few times to try and group it all. And we've split it up into the individual sections. So I'm going to click off. And holding down shift, I'm going to select all the bats because I want to get rid of those. They don't match my bats, so, so we lose them. Let's get that one. Press delete, we can get rid of those. So what are we left with? So we've got this section, we move this over one at a time. Oh, we're not in the right place. Why aren't we in the right place? Ah, so it's dropped all of this background image outside of our groups for some reason. So what I'm going to do is come over here with click off. I'm going to drag a box over the top of all of our background elements. I'm then going to right click on top of them and then we can come down and move to layer. Click on that. We get a choice of our layers. We want the background layer. We can press move. Now that's put that all within our background layer. So now when we move the different elements across, we should have it sat behind our illustration. So I was having difficulty adjusting the background gradient of the Adobe Illustrator file. So I've deleted the background color and I'm just going to make my own new one. We can come over, we can grab a rectangle tool. We can drag a rectangle out over the top of all of it. Increase the opacity up. We can add a radial gradient. So 
So I'm just going to speed the video up while I move the different elements into position and adjust their gradients. So I'm just tweaking these different gradients until I'm happy with them. So I, I'm quite liking our image at the moment. The only thing is our, our Grim Reaper seems to be getting a bit lost in the dark background behind. So I might just put a bit of uh, lightness behind him. So I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool and I grab out, drag out an ellipse and just move that, adjust that slightly. We can increase the blur. We can reduce the opacity. I'm going to drag our main illustration down a bit. I'm going to select my writing and I'm going to change the colour. Change it to a darker brown. I'm going to drag them up and we can just stick that at the top. We can use the Halloween up there, can't we? And give it a little bit of a skew. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to lighten the colour of this. I'm going to press zoom in a touch so we can see what we're doing. So with it selected, I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'm then going to darken it, add a bit of blur, move it down slightly. And if we come up to the top, we can drop it down below our writing. So I think the last thing I want to do is just add a bit of shadow to our Grim Reaper. He's got the moon directly behind him. So I think he should have a little bit of shadow at the front. To do that, I'm just going to come up. I'm going to grab my Bezier tool. If we come to our layers, and objects dialog box. We can just check we're on background. We can then come up and just draw in a shape for his shadow. Come into the fill and strip dialog box. I'm going to add a bit of blur. I will reduce the opacity slightly. When I get my selection tool, I'm just going to drag this out sideways just so oh, I think that looks pretty good. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clip away all of the areas that I don't want. So, if we Zoom out a touch. I'm going to come into the snapping menu at the top here. So we click on this arrow. We just want to make sure that we've got snapping snapping to page borders ticked, which we have. So we can close that down. We just need to turn on our snapping. So first thing I want to do before we create our clipping mask is just group the whole project together. This will bring it all forwards onto one layer, but we can live with that now. These are all unlocked. So we just drag a box over everything. We can come up to the top. We can click group. So we've got it all grouped. Now we need to uh, create a clipping mask, same size as our page. So I'm just going to come up, get the rectangle tool, snap to the top corner, drag it down to the bottom corner till it snaps. Then I'm going to hold, get my selection tool. So now I'm going to hold down shift, select our image behind, and I'm going to come up to object, down to clip, and over to set clip. So I didn't notice to start with, but we've actually lost the white ellipse that we were using for backlighting. So I've gone back in and added the ellipse again, and I've also removed the extra page that turned up when we opened the Illustrator file. Well, that didn't go completely to plan, but I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.